Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming in on this very cold day and spending a bit of time with me. The bowls that I last turned or turned last time, I don't know whether you guys can remember them, but I, I did that one, which I finished which came up very well. And this dog bowl, I didn't quite get finished in time. And then I ended up hand sanding it because the, the U was so hard that it didn't want to work with the sanding pads on the drill. So hand sanded it and it came up a treat, just took a little bit longer. But uh, so that's the two different shapes that I do. There's the two profiles. That is my much preferred shape. This one I will do if I've got a true round that is tr true in depth as well. So I find I can salvage a lot more half branches out of that one because that is half a branch and then the corresponding piece is the other half a branch but uh, depends what the wood will allow anyway today this is the piece of I'm trying to get it so that the light doesn't shine on it too much this is the piece of you that I put aside last time we were talking and said, or time before last, and say, I will show you how I determine the shape of the bowl. And that's the outside, or that will eventually be the bottom of the bowl. Um, there's quite a bit missing there. But there's also a nice streak of purple down through there that runs up through what will be the top and the inside of the bowl and down the other side. The brown darker piece you can see is actually bark so there is a bark inclusion in it. I'm hoping and praying that it will hold together. Just looking at one end there's one, two, three, four. There's four branch centers on there, that end. There's three on this end. So it's not your conventional piece of you. And you can see all the little inclusions what will be the inside so i'm going to make that the bottom so i've already put across when i cut the disc out while the cat while the um compass is still set it's easy to put it on the outside two crosses there's the center i've drawn a center ring on there which is the same diameter as the faceplate ring which I use. So that will get screwed on there in a second. Let me change cameras and let me introduce you to Mark. He's just about, no, he's not. Where's he gone? He's still there. Yep. Uh, having problems getting Mark on screen. It shows he's there, but it won't let me load him. Let's try that one. Let's go back to there. 
Oh. Well, that sorts itself out, hopefully. Don't know whether you can hear me. If you can hear me, Mark, give me a thumbs up. Right, I've got a thumbs up, but I can't. Doesn't want to let me let him in for some unknown reason. I can't see what he's saying because it's all misted. Right. While, he's, while we're trying to get that one going, I'm going to bring you guys in on a different camera, which is my overhead camera. You can see that one. That first shot was further down the workshop than what you normally see. So. Technology is marvellous when it works. Bear with us, guys. I'm going to take, I'm going to take you right out, Mark, of the screen, and then. Right, oh, it says add to screen. Right, gotcha. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> Add me to the stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, but it didn't want to know. Right. Okay. At least I've got his clothes on now, so I'm going to put him in the background. He can chat to you. I'm just going to alter that camera a fraction, so and then screw this on. Right. Over to you, Mark. Right. So in the chat so far, we've got. Happy New Year from Mike Hugh at Ilminster, Andy H's for Turning, Ben Jamin, Forking Owls, Hodgepodge Woodworks, Mark Pritchard, some dodgy bloke from Bude, Robert Dolman, Ruben Woodcraft, TJ Turning, Wivy Woodshed. Uh, I think that's it so far in the chat. Got 22 people watching. Okay. And as ever, if you've got a question, folks, Shout out. Let me know it's a question and I'll fire it off to Keith. <laughs> we'll do our best to answer it. Hope Sorry, you're all doing well. Hello and greetings. Need to invest in some new screws. Oh, so hard, that piece of you. It's fine. A new screw with a decent head on it. See if that will go in. Yes. Right, the screw orientation to me is very important. The grain basically goes up and down the wood. So I've got one, two, three screws in there and they're all in different parts of the grain. If I were to move the faceplate ring a fraction so that the, that then permeates that one and that one in the same groove, in the same grain, that one and that one in the same grain, and those two just missing it. So if you put four screws in, you could well end up in trouble and splitting it. So when you're putting your face plates on or whatever you're using, make sure that the screws don't theoretically line up with the grain. Wouldn't be the first time I've split a piece of wood. And it usually happens on a nice piece that has got nice color, nice grain. Mark, 
Pritchard's asking. I think he means wax. Don't you put wax on the screws? If it's that hard, I will actually countersink, uh, pilot drill them in the first instance just to get them in. I have used wax on the screws. I've used everything. Um, used to put tallow on because I always had tallow in the van from the lead work I used to do. So you can put anything on there. You can even spit on them, which makes them run in just that much easier. Di Prout's in. Afternoon, Di. Hello, Di. Made it this time then, mate. Right, I'm on the lowest speed possible on my fixed speed lathe, which now that's quite balanced. So just going to straight forward knock off the corner. Nibble it off. waxed the bed bars the other night as I went in, or yesterday as I went in. It doesn't feel like I've got all the wax off, but cause, so the banjo's sliding. Right, for those that have not seen me turn before, that handle is basically at my pocket, at, at my waist. So my right arm is right down. So the chisel is pointing up. So as I cut, I don't know whether you can just see it picking up yeah. off of the chisel, that is slicing it. If I were to try and cut in this way, it still cuts, but it makes a bigger knock and it tears more. Having said that, that's pretty rough there. But so, handle down low, bevel on, a nice quiet cut. Slicing the wood off. says he loves when you get purple around the small limbs in you. Yeah. yeah. Amy DeAngelis. Hi, Amy. Hello, Amy. Early morning or uh, late night for you, Amy? Quarter to 12 there, I think. Right. Yeah. She can't sleep then. With this cut, I've got the tool rest well below center. I'm not cutting on center, but I'm using it as a, uh, a shearing cut. So it doesn't really matter. I could cut across the top there exactly the same if I'd got a tool rest up that high. Okay.
This is going to be vicious on the tools. where we are yes that that purple and the branch the bark goes in quite a long way so I'm hoping that it, we don't lose it and I'm gonna need to take a bit off the bottom so that I can at least put a foot on there Amy says that uh, that piece of wood looks gorgeous. It is, Amy. It is truly piece amazing. Of you. Piece of you, Amy. Right. See where the foot needs to be. So it's only the left wing of the dividers that touch that. I'm supposed to pull the wire off. Okay. Put the tool rest up a fraction now and see if we can make something of a, a foot on this. So this foot's going to be a mortise. It's going to be about three mil, four mil deep when I finish. Up to centre, my homemade dovetail tool, 5.8, normal wood chisel, ground and profiled to the angle of my jaws. That is just oh, just on three three mil. And to decorate the bottom, two rings. So anyone can make a similar tool, any old carbon steel, carpenter's chisel. That's all it is, reprofiled, so that you've got the right angle that matches the jaws. And this will match the C. D, E, and F of Axminster. If you're using different jaws, uh, different different company, you'll need to get different jaws, a different set. Oh, that's a different. That's a different jaw in that one. So many different jaws out there. Mike, the Midnight Joker's in. Hello, Mike. Right, now we've got the the foot sorted. Let's see what we can do to refine the outside shape. Now I'm looking for about a third of the overall diameter for the foot. So this was a six inch blank, give or take either side of the 
they're tight so I'm, that's just a, a good two inch foot don't want it too small not with the shape of it and that's Now I'm looking over the back of the piece to see the overall profile, not where I'm cutting. Pete from Twisted Trees is in. Hi, Pete. Hello, Pete. Yes, Pete, I do still have all my knuckles. Thank you. And fingers. Right, let's have a, a gander, see what that looks like. I've still got to take quite a bit off the top because there's the bandsaw cut marks on there uh, now I'm undecided as to whether I leave it that profile or change it to my preferred profile I think I'm gonna possibly scoop it out so that it's my preferred profile Just makes it look a little bit uh, lighter on the table or wherever you put it. Daniel Dubois in. Hello, Tournage Dubois. Hello, Daniel. That's as close as I'm getting to the edge. Now I'll just refine this bottom shape. cross between the two that's more of an OG but I'm happy with that shape it still gives me a little bit of the bark inclusion a little bit of bark inclusion on the base so it's going to stand it's not going to be an easy easy turn what have we got? We got one, two, three, four branches in that piece alone. Another one through here. With another one there, one there, plus all the little pips as well. So it's going to be fun, but uh, we have the technology and the time. There's no time limit on this. So I'm just going to sand this up. I'm going to do it by hand because this is so hard. The abrasive pads the just, just, just skate over it because they're traveling at a fair speed
espionage. The figure in on this is brilliant. Clean that up already. Go down a grit. That was uh, that was eighty. Go down to one twenty. Checking that there's no massive marks left on it. So that was 120. Hit it with 240. Leroy 500 and Ben Jamin have just joined. Hi guys. Hi guys. On to 240. think that's the sanding done yeah I'm happy with that just want so to for those, for those joining late Keith is turning a piece of you with some inclusions in it and it's very hard <laughs> exceptionally hard yeah I'm just going to tart this uh, dovetail up a bit oh. I'm not happy with it sorry Ben been here from the start, apparently. My bad. I probably even read your name out. Yeah. I'm not with it. Don't get the hump, Ben. We don't mean it. We welcome anybody. Oh, we've welcomed some people two or three times. Yeah. Yeah. But Jen <laughs> Jennifer's not in yet, though, is she? Oh, don't do that. Don't put that stress on me. I don't think so. <laughs> God, I hope I haven't missed her. <laughs> right, so with decent abrasive, that's taken me less than five minutes to sand that. And I will say with decent abrasive, because it's no good going into home base, B&Q, places like that, and grabbing a few sheets of abrasive off of their shelf thinking oh it's all the same <laughs> it's not i'll admit i um to everybody in the chat keith already knows this i get my abrasive from keith and the stuff that he uses it top notch i really do like it <laughs> This is an, um, a Velcro backed, um, and it's one of the Indasa range. It's very true, Amy, I do. It's not expensive. If anyone wants any, all it do, all I do is charge you the price of it plus delivery. And it usually works out as a, well, it did before everything went up or was going up January the 1st. It was the £4.10 Royal Mail bracket it came in. I just want to spin this a bit fast just to get rid of the sanding sealer that is in. Barry Fitch is in. Hello, Says Barry. Hi, Club member. Yeah. How's the pen turning going, Barry? He's a, basically a pen turner. Nothing wrong with that. No, I'm not knocking it. All right, so that's now dry. All right, Yorkshire grit. Where's Glyn? It'll be in later, hopefully. So that, sand, sand that to 240. It's all we need. 
Yorkshire grit put on with the lathe turned off. Just rub it in lightly. Don't want too much, but you just need enough to, to cover it. Sounds quite crunchy when you're putting it on, which is what you want because it's the chemical, not the chemicals, the constituents in it that you're, we use to break down and polish from 240 up to the equivalent of a thousand. So light pressure. Lowest speed you lay the go or around about 450, 500. Work it in. I can hear that the, the crunchiness is gradually disappearing. And there is now no noise whatsoever. Find a clean piece of paper. continue to work it in you work it in and you can now increase the speed a bit because heat does help it helps the bees wax soak in a bit so I'm looking for a clean towel coming off of this and then I know that the Yorkshire grit has done its job. There's nothing on that towel there, apart from a dent where I've so just need to clean that piece out. Now we could, and we sometimes go to the Yorkshire grit ultra fine which is in a white tub but I found on this U it makes no difference so I'm going straight over to chestnuts wood wax 22 would do if I could get into the tin. A screwdriver might help. So with, with this, you don't want too much. Little is more. Uh, you can barely see it on the paper. Rub it in by hand. Put the lid on before I fill it up with the uh, shavings. Slowest speed, melt it in without too much pressure. Clean section of paper. No pressure. Just let the wax do the job. You can, if you wish, if you need to, increase the speed. This has come up gorgeous without even increasing the speed. Look at the shine on that. Beautiful. 32 watching, Keith. Oh, well done, guys. Thank you very much. For those new new ones in there, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you've uh, all subscribed. You all hit the, hit the like button. Hello, Doug. So another little Mark trick Pritch I've gone. Sorry, Mark Pritchard's asking, Keith, do you think a lot more people have taken up turning this year? Yes. Yes. They've uh, picked us up on Facebook 
and YouTube. Um, watched us more season turners and thought I can do that and bought a cheap lathe and then bought a, a better lathe a bit later on. Right, let me just explain what I'm doing. I've got dovetail jaws into a dovetail mortise. I'm just locking it in and before I do it down tight, I'm turning the blank on the jaws. All that is doing, I'm gradually increasing the pressure. All that's doing is cleaning out the crap and the crud that's left in there. And now I'm up to the full pressure. That is locked on there and that should run absolutely spot on. You can, not necessarily on you, but I'm not saying it's not going to be impossible. When you cut your mortise, you can leave furry bits inside. Those furry bits can throw it. Through rotating the bowl on the chuck, you're using the jaws or the corners of the jaws as a little cutting device, little reamer, just to clean the crud and the crap out. Let me put you guys on a different camera. Come on, mouse, wake up. Oh, it's so cold in here that uh, the batteries are suffering a bit in the in the mouse. A bit like my feet, they're suffering a bit. Right. So you can see the shape. Don't think I'm going to be in the way. I can do, I can, I didn't want to do that. Drunken lot. Let me just lift you up a fraction. I'll square you up in a second. So that you can look down above my arm. All right. As usual, I'm not taking the faceplate ring off until I've made the initial two or three cuts and a little bit of a recess in the top there. If I have a major catch, which we've all done, it is still possible to remount it on the original mounting that you had and cut the mortise back again. So uh, gingerly cut. See what that looks like. Have I got? I've got full, full cut on there. The, the so chat now, has descended into a plethora of wood-related puns. That's all right. If it keeps them happy, <laughs> <laughs> I'll check it out later on. As long as it's clean. Oh, it's clean. Now I'm, Mental, but clean. That's good. Now I've got to decide how wide. I want the walls of this bowl and I think I want them just inside of that little inclusion there. So that is somewhere about there. On hardwood like this where you want a little bit of care what I'm doing is I'm putting my thumb there and using that as a pivot to run the gauge round. Brian at Hardwood Turnings here. Hello Brian. I've got so much, so little room on the bench here and I'm Fighting a bit. I'm going to put the tool rest up a fraction. Right. Use 
to seal centre on the bevel not going to do any harm at all to the chisel I can get some depth can remove the the center but that that was my insurance had I have had a nasty catch and on an edge like this you can quite often get a nasty catch as the woods coming round you're trying to be a bit aggressive with the wood with a chisel uh, particularly for beginners it's a a useful hint like I say you, once you take off the faceplate ring you will inevitably inevitably never get it back to the same position you might get it close it will be on the same piece of wood but that's about it so you can see the sh or I can see the shine coming off of the bevel which show, tells me that uh, that wood is hard. Whichever's your preferred method of hogging out the wood. Mine is to leave some in the centre until such time we are getting close to that piece it just gives it a bit more mass and stability now I can come down the side pick up the cup a bit more speed what you don't want to do is this cup get to the middle there and then come up the inside you will almost certainly get a catch or a grab or come down the middle and come straight up the outside don't want to do that that's because I've got a, a camera rig right under my arm chat frozen not that I can see it <coughs> can keep okay. up with it a bit yeah. screen is frozen okay. work down in steps I know that's going to bleach it out a bit for you guys, but I do really need to see what I'm doing. Too bad. See why it was grabbing a pea a bit. 
because that is basically loose wood. That'll stay there. Let's see if I can get one decent pass down the outside. Oh, the, in, oh, the inside. Can't with that chisel, can't get it in. Spindle gouge. It's not wrong. It's just, just that it's got a shorter handle. Potspot's pot, got a question. Far away. For those of you that do lives, do your cameras pick up tons of light? I had to turn off two of my overhead LEDs so the live wasn't bleached out the other day. Yeah, lighting is difficult. Depends yeah, on what cameras you, you use. Got to be careful. The cheaper the camera, a lot of instances, the worse the the lighting is. That's sandable now. That was uh, uh, a half inch spindle gouge. But it's got a short handle and I can get round. Needs must. And it wasn't hanging over any more than an inch at its deepest point. So it wasn't bouncing. It got less bounce in that than it ha I had in my quarter inch bowl gouge. Michael has a party's in. Uh, Michael. Hi, Michael. Right. Drop the speed down. 80. Fingers clear. Keep the paper moving and don't get the wood if hot. If the paper feels hot, you're pressing too hard or you need to invest in another bit of paper. Heat and you are the two worst combinations. It will shake quicker than what you think is possible. I was going to say, Hodge, if you, if you stream with OBS, you can go into the settings and adjust the brightness levels within OBS. This is straight off of StreamYard, guys. I have uh, three ceiling strips in there, a small strip in front of me throwing the light back and that was the light on my bench grinder but it, at least I could see in the end then and I've also got one uh, one above me it's that's a bit dark for me that's with a LED bulb in an angle poise above the lathe that's one above my head as I stand back, which is a which bleaches it out a bit. That one at the other end makes no difference whatsoever. That one kills it off of this end, so I can't easily see the keyboard. So it's balancing it up and not getting the lights too close. I know if Dale was in, he would say, "Paint your walls white." Yes. So you get more reflection off of the walls as an indirect light rather than a direct light. I think that's got all of the 
tool marks out with 80 go over to 120 it's trial and error and the distance your cameras are away from the photo the piece you're photographing <laughs> or recording also make a difference the one we're on now is just over a foot about 13 in, 14 inches away from the end of or from where i'm standing the overhead one is a little bit closer at a foot so to get a give you guys a decent picture i've got to have the cameras close Keith, could you show us the two bowls on the stool, please? Yep. Let me just finish this bit of grit. All right, for those of you that were in my last live, you remember I did two bowls. I found... Let me change camera. Come on, mouse, wake up, you bugger. Apologies for being so slow. It's not me. It's cameras and everything. Two bowls seem to be picking up a lot of lot of glare from somewhere. That's all right. The, uh, That's fine. That's not too bad now. Yeah, the other last live I did, I did showed you two different styles. My preferred style, which is what we've done today, and the conventional beginner's dog bowl. Nothing wrong with a dog bowl. It just sits rather heavy. And you need you need to be able to get your fingers in to lift it. I've seen so many straight-sided, square-bottomed bowls. And some of them have been quite big, 12, 12 inches diameter. That's only six inch. That's not too bad. Very squat. No shape at all to it. Same piece of wood diameter-wise. In actual fact, it's a quarter of an inch bigger. Same depth. That one, like the one I'm turning today, shows off nice character inside, colour inside, grain. That one's got colour and grain inside, but of a not quite so pleasant a colour. Nice piece of purple around the outside there but that's the two bowls that's the one i finished that one live i finished this one by hand sanding um the following day so that's the two that i've done and that's the difference the shape of a bowl can make you can have a nice squat bowl that holds a lot doesn't say a lot for the authors that's made it apart from Clond that he can turn wood Klondike craftsman's in hi lewis hi lewis so, back on to 240. <laughs> ben, ben jamming saying keith can i have that spindle blank in the top right of the screen which I haven't got when one you were, top. When you were on the other camera. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Depends what it was. Right. Don't know. I'll go back on that camera in a minute anyway. Ian in the shed's in. Hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. 
Right, question for you guys in the chat. What is your preferred time for a lunchtime live? 12.30? 12.45? Or one o'clock. Personally, yeah, I'd say one PM. Ben says one PM, Pete says one PM. Terry says one PM. There's always one. We know, we know what Terry says. Just, Says one, Donald says 12.45, Andy says one, Wivy says one, Colin Izzard says one, Mark Pritchard says one. Well, yeah, Amy, you'd prefer it if we did our lives at about 10 a.m. for us. 10 in the morning, yeah. Yeah, it's just waking up that point of the day. Uh, My class was, Friday uh, says 12. That's just standard um, Milan sand in sealer, the shellac sand in sealer. Pete says 1307, because that's what he usually remembers. Yeah, you always get one awkward bugger, don't you? So <laughs> a, a lot of you will have seen various turners. After they sanded it, before they put a sand in sealer on, give it a coat of meths to get rid of the dust. There's the dust picked up in the meths because there's meths in the uh, shellac sand in sealer. So 50 50 mix, or no more than 50 50 mix. So mine does both jobs in one pass. Just going to give that a quick spin. pull out anything that was in those uh, all that bark inclusion that runs across find it it's got wax on it clean bit of paper right with the lathe turned off I'm just going to rub in some Yorkshire grit. And this will take it from the 240, which I finished sanding at, up to about a thousand. If I really wanted to go over the top, I could put on the Yorkshire Grit Microfine, which I do have some of, but this is you. So it isn't on this piece necessary. Apparently, I've got to do something here, Keith. Go on. Bear, bear with me. And I do apologize in advance. But for hands that feel pity can be soft as your face. Mild brown Yorkshire Gritty. There, that's, right. that's all you're getting. That's all I'm getting good. I'll put my headphones <laughs> back on now. Yeah. That's all right. Your dust extractor decided it wanted to eat the bit of paper that I was using, but it didn't suck it all the way. So the lowest speed you'll lay the go, rub it in, and you'll hear it change from quite a gravelly, gritty noise on your paper to virtually no noise on the paper. Find a clean bit of paper. Work it in, wipe it off. I'm looking for nothing on the paper. That's still got some Yorkshire grit on the paper. Virtually, virtually done. Just increase the speed for the last 
quick buff. That's come Hina, off clean. Ian in the shed says, why is it unnecessary to use microphone on you? Because you can't get a smoother finish than what that is. And all I'm going to do is put wood wax 22 on it. And uh, this is so hard, this U, that through applying the microfine will make no difference whatsoever. I've tried it. So it's a little bit of wood wax 22. Work it in. And less is more with wax. It's easy enough to put a second coat on if you need to. Light pressure is all you need. Work it in. Clean bit of paper. It's still got light pressure. Increased volume. Final buff. No magic ingredients, but look at the gloss on that. Look at the shine on that. <laughs> okay, Amy, too much information, dear. Too much information. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, she says, unless you're waxing her legs, they look like a Wookiee at the moment. Right. So that, guys, is me finished. Awesome. Yeah, I like that. And I was a little bit dubious whether that would actually stop together. Almost goes across the outside. So that is Yorkshire grit standard, and I would got would have got no better finish. Come on, computer, wake up! Had I have gone to the fine, I can guarantee that because I've tried it in the past. So, which blank was someone after, whoever it was? But, uh, I, th I think he might be confusing that plastic box for a spindle blank behind your shoulder. That one? No, over, the square one. That one? Yeah. That's an ice cream tub, but there's no ice, ice cream, cream in it. It's an ice cream tub, Ben. It's not a spindle blank. So from a piece of wood that a lot of people, turners, would have disregarded because it was too rubbishy looking, we've got a nice, let me measure it for you, in real inches that's, that's 140 mil <laughs> by 45 mil. <laughs> <laughs> you perk. I, I'm universal. So, guys. That's great. That's today's little live in less than an hour, or just on the hour. If anyone's got any questions, throw them at the chat. I can see it now, so I can answer a bit quicker. Let's, uh, let's bring Mark in.
just to prove that he is is still here. Still here. Awake. Yeah, still, still here and awake. <laughs> don't try not to sing. That's <laughs> always a bonus. Okay, nobody likes my voice. Don't care. <laughs> no, you've got it. So that's all you can do. Thanks, Barry. See you next time. Um, it's likely to be next Wednesday, I believe. I don't think anyone's got a Wednesday. I know I said I'd do Tuesdays, but Brian seems to want to do a Tuesday, which isn't a problem. He can carry on with Tuesdays. I'll carry on with Wednesdays if we if we get an issue. Yep. Uh, we can swap around. Um, nothing is cast in stone on on YouTube, so you get what you're given. Or when we can do, or when we can, when we can find someone to worm for us. Uh, number one worm. Yeah. Well, Mark and I get on pretty well. Yeah. I do quite a bit of chatting as I'm talking. Um, I've got that through demonstrating down at uh, Amberley Museum. Hunters come along. They want to know what you're doing. You can't totally blank them saying, I can't hear what you do, can't hear what uh, I'm saying. So. He's a nightmare to hear one for. He never shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> the bonus, you told me. It keeps you quiet. <laughs> That's true. Thanks, Andy, for dropping by. See you next week. See you in the chats. Thanks, Lewis. I see you're off. Barry just got here. So he scared everyone away. Barry's wood turning. Just in time for the end, Barry. Yeah. Yeah, just, just to prove that we've done something, Barry. That's what you've missed. So you can pop back over and uh, catch it on YouTube when they decide to put some of mine up. Hi, Karen. Karen Hello, Karen. There. Thanks for live. The number one earworm. Yeah. Well, that's what we need. Oh, he's coming back with all the sad stories Barry forgot. Sad, isn't it? Go stand in the corner. Yep. Over there. Over there. Think about what you've done. Yeah, or haven't done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian, message me, mate. We'll have a chat. Yep, there you go, Brian. Basically, it works like this. He turns, I talk. Mm. You I hear talk what I say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, you can hear what he says, so uh, it's nothing secret. We're not talking about you. It's just uh, so you don't need to keep looking at the screen. Yep. It's so, dead easy. Yeah. Once you've done it a couple of times... It's like, it's no different to turning. You just forget the cameras are there. Keep clouting them with the chisels. Or knocking them with your arm. Pizza. Barry's preferred start time is 13.37. Yeah, it's about right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So if there's no more right. questions coming in... I'm going in for a cup of coffee and a warm-up because it ain't very warm in the workshop here. I'm not sure whether I've got feet on the end of my legs. I've got sawdust on them, so there's a little bit of insulation down there. Well, I'm going down the workshop and see if I can figure out another piece to turn without losing my knuckles. Right. Some spinning think, pointy bits. Yeah, thinking about next week... Um, not sure what I'm going to do. I might, I might see if I can tidy up the other end. Because buried over the back there, there is Dale from Maple Trees just popped in. Hi Dale. Big forward. Hi Dale. And Barry from Real Simple Things is in. Bonjour. Right. Mon chéri, we pass. Yeah. Uh, for the late arrivals. Nothing, nothing big. But, uh, That's what she said. A little six by two 
you pot with almost a scary section through the middle. It is just joined on the outside. Just there, there is a, a little bit of wood between the two. But other than that, that's a, that's a bark inclusion. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not sure what next week will turn. We'll uh, bring forward. I think of something. Yeah, might even be a little bit of spindle work, but the problem with spindle work on here is that the camera rig gets in the way. Dale says a funnel. No, I don't do funnels. I'll leave them for Steve, the professionals. And Pete. And, and me. And him. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all done it. You've just done it on air. Oh, yeah, Ben's got a good suggestion. Do a box. You haven't done a box yet. I'm not a big box person. Um, big box, little box, big box, little box. Yeah, no, I'm not, <laughs> not, not a box person. Could I'm be, here all week, hollow, Yeah, it could be a hollow firm form. But, uh, again, it's not the best lathe to do it on because I haven't got enough access in the end. I've got to... I've got to think what I can get in between the lighting rig, the camera rig, which is here, which is only four inches away from the end of the bed. So without that upright, I lose the tailstock cam and the stability of the overhead cam up here. So. Barry says, hollow form, do, 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 do. Hollow form, do, 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 do. We're see, here we're on see. a high, Barry. Yeah. Well, see, see what I can do. Um, I can say that it's hollow forms on this and is not the most simple because of tall room. I can clout the rig easily now with just a standard bowl gouge. Uh, we'll find something. Even if it's uh, a couple of different shapes of egg cups and uh, or a little goblet or something like that. Yeah, Terry says, um, could you use the big lathe? Do something big. Big and impressive. Big. Yes. I vote what, big. Go big. 20, 22 inches by three? Yeah, have at it. It might be a two-weeker. No. <laughs> None of that rubbish. Get it done in an hour. <laughs> you stand there and turn. Don't talk, just turn. I can like turn and gonna, talk. <laughs> like that's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I turn and talk. I generally stop to answer questions. Yeah. Right. Knock it on the head. Go work to do. <laughs> right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Hope you've hit the, uh, the like button. Hope you've all subscribed to my channel and do as much promoting as we can for each other. In that case, I will... Come on. Mouse, wake up. I will get rid of Mark. Oh, cheers. Thank Bye. Thank you very much, Mark. Quite all right. And get rid of myself. And see you next week or in one of the lives of someone else's. Thanks, guys. Bye Take for care, now. Everyone. Bye.